Hi everyone. It is now June 16. It's 12:29 a.m. on the East Coast and this is Tucson. Tucson. Strong cells. Strong cells. All around the extremely low frequencies that are being set off right in your face. I'm going to let you listen to, I guess, a local meteorologist tell you what the weather is going to be for Tucson. No, we don't have natural weather anymore. Whatever they want to bring us is what we get. These ultra-low frequencies are being set off from Tucson, Phoenix area. They are intersecting. We have right angled precipitation. You have ultra low frequencies as well being set off in New Mexico in several places. And you have ultra low frequencies and a nice next red heart ring. Concentric heart rings. Let's see that again. Ultra low frequencies or extremely low frequencies in this entire area. And where is it? Right there. You can see it being shut off. So Look at this mess. Look at what man using frequencies are bringing you. Right here, you see a lot the faded, very defined lines, not Mother Nature, very defined lines, very defined lines, very defined lines, and Let's go back and check out that next red hall ring. Am I in the right spot? Right here? Right here? Concentric? Next red hall ring is high frequency heating with extremely low frequencies, it gets you weather, whatever they want to bring. And it can be weather that is rather disastrous. So let's check out, oh wow, the National Mosaic. Isn't that a pretty picture? So the harp ring, the next red harp ring, goes from Mexico, Texas, New Mexico, and another next round harboring, Mexico, into New Mexico, into Arizona, extremely low frequencies, all over. Let's listen to your, I don't know, is she a meteorologist? Good morning. We get a bit of a pattern change in the southwest, and this could really be a good thing as there are still many fires scattered about the Fort Corners area. Cool air dips into parts of California and Nevada, and moisture will pick up. But the big story really isn't Friday. It turns to Saturday when we're watching what's left of Bud push through parts of eastern Arizona and western New Mexico. This could bring one to two inches of rain through parts of the area and help extinguish some fires. Okay, doesn't sound too bad, right? But she said Hurricane Bud? Really? This is what's left of Hurricane Bud. Wow. Okay. I guess this is Hurricane Bud. Well, Bud, you sure did take off rather fast to reach Arizona and New Mexico because you were down here and I posted a video. Oh, 
Are they trying to get another hurricane going here? Uh, but you were down here, Hurricane Bud, for days on end. And I captured this at 11.47 p.m. June 14. And this is Bud over here. Really? That's Bud. Well, Bud was a manufactured hurricane that never showed up on radar. And of course, you have these artificial clouds that erupt in a nice fine line. I've posted videos on these clouds and they are manufactured in the exact same place. There are extremely low frequency transmitter sites in Mexico. Now it's today. It is June 16, 2018. It's 5.11 p.m. on the Eastern, uh, Eastern Standard Time, the East Coast. Monsoon rain could cause severe flooding near burn scar areas. Doesn't it remind you of California? First you have the fires, then they bring on severe flooding. This was posted today at noontime. Now, before I go on, I just want to show you monsoon patterns set up. Remnants of Hurricane Bud to jumpstart southwest monsoon season. Abundant moisture coming on up. Everything manufactured by man. Monsoon begins with a bang, thanks to Bud. Now, when I see the extremely low frequencies and the Doppler radar shooting off their high frequencies, I get concerned. You guys in Arizona, in Mexico, Phoenix, Tucson in particular, um, and areas of New Mexico. What took place yesterday and today? I can't find any articles that give me detailed information. Did you get flooding? Did, did anything happen? Um, but monsoon. I do not recall ever hearing any meteorologist anywhere in this country refer to our thunderstorms or rain events as monsoons. Monsoon is a, that's the terminology that they use in Asia, South, Southeast Asia. Do we get monsoons here or is this, well, is this just moving us along into that global world where we all unite. There are no differences. We're all the same. We use the same same language. Um, or is this terminology monsoon, is that something that is uh, really just a term for the Southwest, Arizona, New Mexico? I don't know, but I've never ever come across monsoon and well it was yesterday I suddenly started seeing monsoon, North American monsoon. Monsoon rain could cause severe flooding near burn scar areas and I believe that this is a farm. Another farm destroyed uh, this this was the best I could do in terms of what is going on. AccuWeather, National Weather Service, current weather warnings. Um, well, Arizona, you look clear today. Nothing's happening. New Mexico, flash flood watch, not a surprise. And this area of Texas, the orange heat advisory and this burnt orange is severe thunderstorm warning. The yellow, 
severe thunderstorm watch. The purple, excessive heat warning. <laughs> I don't know what to make of anything anymore. Monsoon season is here. What to do when the weather turns dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. And yes, Arizona, your large dust storms expected during 2018 monsoon. All right, let's just check out IntelliCast quickly. Now, it seems that when I turn on the storm tracker, wow, do we have strong cells and possible damaging winds and hail. There was one night I opened it up. It was like, oh, the entire country had hail. Well, we're seeing an awful lot of hail all over. Hail detected. And you got strong winds up here. Hail. All the blue is hail. Blue, 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 blue. Strong cells, strong cells, strong cells all over. Strong cells here. Uh, all manufactured. No joke. No joke. You know, it's bizarre to be living when you know that you're at war and they're just using unconventional weapons like weather. So you can see the outline of a next ad hoc ring. Let's just check out what they are saying is coming to Houston. Wow. A real geoengineered cloud mass. You can see all of the lines. You can see the grid patterns. I, it's so clear. They don't care. They know that most of the American people are just zombies and dead. Dead. They're not thinking for themselves. They're incapable of critical thinking, incapable of getting off their butts, turning off their TVs to do some research to learn that all of their weather, no, not Mother Nature, not an act of God, man using weather as a weapon. So, I have a subscriber in Houston who's concerned and started preparing for flooding because her local meteorologists are talking about flooding. Well, you don't see much going on here in Houston. They talked about Aletta last week and that never really formed into anything. I think they just fail a lot with these weather events or or they're just posting all of this crap to keep everybody on the edge of their seats. They did talk about flooding in one local news broadcast that I listened to. So what do you have? You have people in Houston who are now beginning to prepare for flooding. And it sure does consume an awful lot of their time. And when you've been flooded over and over and over again, and yes, it can happen in a non-flood zone when man is using weather as a weapon, um, you get really tired. You just get really tired. But all of this, you can see all of the geoengineering taking place, manufactured cloud. Um, let's just go to here. I want to show you something too. All right, so you see the next red harpering, right? And you see there's an intersecting next red harpering. That's the high frequency heating of the ionosphere using the extremely low frequencies uh, to bring about severe thunderstorms, tornadoes, whatever they want. Hell, hell, a lot of hell. So you can also see the next red harpering right down here. Okay. Let's, oh, what is this? Well, the long wave infrared imagery. The red, the heating. The red means it's getting really hot. Wow. High frequency heating right in the area where you see the next red harp. Those Doppler radar 
high frequency heating stations. And let's see what else is being heated up. Whoops. I think. Oh, this storm that they want to manufacture to bring into Houston to cause some flooding. Now, the National Mosaic doesn't go down this far, so we can't see anything there. Let's see what we see at the Texas-Mexico border. Ah, next red harpering, right here. Well, Arizona, New Mexico, you guys who live in those two states, did you get anything really severe? And, you know, I, here you have a next red harpering still going through this storm in New Mexico. Right there. Let's see. Ah, you got the heating right here and that is New Mexico bada bing man creating your weather just a quick reminder for those of you who don't know that is Doppler radar and that is a high frequency heating station you can think of Doppler radar as a mini harp station Doppler radar they have sites all over the country, and this is years old, this map, so they probably have even more Doppler radar. But as you can see, we have Doppler radar New Mexico, right where you saw the Nexrad Harp rain that I just showed you. If you want to learn how Nexrad Harp works, click on the link below to this video, Weather War 101. If you want to see how many ionospheric heaters, extremely low frequency, very low frequency sites we have all over the world, lasers and more, click on Jim Lee's video. And a reminder again, high power, extremely low frequency radiation generated by modulated High frequency heating of the ionosphere can cause earthquakes. We've been having a lot of them. Cyclones, thunderstorms, hurricanes, and localized heating. And boy, is it hot here in South Carolina in June. And another reminder, if you've seen videos where I'm talking about extremely low frequency sites, well, this one is in Cutler, Maine. It is extremely powerful, but as you see, Gwen Towers, the Ground Wave Emergency Network, when you see an array of Gwen Towers, you know they're using that as an extremely low frequency transmitter site. So on that note, I hope everybody has a good weekend, that nothing happens, none of you in Houston or along the Gulf Coast, or up north where you have thunderstorm watches. And look at how nicely geoengineered this thing is. I hope no one has to suffer any of the consequences. I just hope that you have a really nice weekend. Ciao, guys.